Welcome to Living in the World International Church. We are here as in doers of God's Word, with signs and wonders following. If you want more information about our ministry, visit us at www.litweek.org or email us at info at You will never be the same again. Now it's time to listen to God's Word from Pastor Femi Alaren. Be blessed as you listen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning and welcome to our Sunday ministration. It's good to be here again teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm sure you've had a wonderful week. No doubt God is on our side. We're still here in the land of the living. So he has a plan for our lives. It's a privilege to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ and I don't take it for granted. I consider it a great privilege to stand before you and teach the word of the Lord. For the month of March, we are t- looking at the subject of faith. And I believe faith is so crucial to everything we shall do in life. The Bible makes it very clear to us in the books of Hebrews 11 verse 6 that without faith it's impossible to please God. So our prayers will be useless when we don't have knowledge and understanding of the subject of faith. And I'm believing that in this season that God himself will increase our faith to a level that pleases him so that in everything that we do we begin to please God. Now, what in the world are you saying? That is the subject of today's, today's sermon. What in the world are you saying? Many of us use our word carelessly. We have been saying things we ought not to say. Remember the scripture in the books of Mark 11 verse 23. It says, For I say unto you, Whatsoever you say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, and you do not doubt in your heart, but believe that what ye have said shall come to pass. It shall have whatever ye say it. What have you been saying to that mountain that stands before you, that stands as an obstacle between you and your promised land? What have you been saying? You see, Faith has a voice and it needs an expression for it to show that truly it will come to manifestation. Jesus said in the books of John 6 verse 63 that the words I say unto you, they contain spirits and life. Remember the books of Proverbs 18 verse 21 said the power of life and death lies in the tongue. So what in the world have you been saying? What you have right now in your life is as a result of the words that you've been saying. Because the word of God has creative power. Even the words that you speak yourself has creative power. Remember, as it is, so we are in this world. First John chapter 4, verse 17. So I'm believing that God will give us a mouth-to-mouth resuscitation today in this sermon. He will heal our tongue so that we begin to say the right thing that will actualize and bring to pass those things that God himself as proposed for us this year. As you listen, I believe God will open your eyes of understanding in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor. We bless your holy name. We thank you so much for your love, for your guidance, your protection. Thank you for the week that just gone by. We thank you for all the things that we have received, for satisfying our mouth with good things. We give you all the glory and praise. Lord, as we sit at your feet, O Lord, Please open our eyes of understanding. Reveal yourself to us. Give us a mouth-to-mouth resuscitation. Heal our tongue, O Lord. May we say the right word at the right time to the glory and praise of your holy name. We give you glory, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. I'm excited about today's sermon. I don't know about you. You see, our words has a job to do in our lives and our destiny. Our words carry the same creative power that formed the heavens and the earth. Words are very powerful. Many people don't understand the secret that back up the words that we speak. I've said to many, to many people many times that you see one of the most dangerous time or two most dangerous times to come across a man is when a man is very happy or when a man is very sad. For example, If you read the scriptures carefully, you will discover that before Isaac blessed Jacob, or he was supposed to bless Esau, he asked that he bring him a venison. And after he ate the venison, his heart was glad. He said, that my soul may bless you. When a man is very happy, the words that comes out of his mouth is backed up by the personality of that man. That's why words are the container which we transfer blessings unto a man likewise also curses you see the scripture talks about a man called Jabesh now Jabesh had a mother 
who bore him in sorrow. And because of the pain she felt at childbirth, she called him Jabesh. And that placed a limit over his life because of the word she said over his life. So that tells you how much words has a part to do in our destiny. Now, many Christians oftentimes use words carelessly. And they say things they ought not to say. Sometimes we say, you know what, you're killing me. And we are wondering why our lifespan is cut short. You say, I am dying. I am tickled to death. He said, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. I shall not die, but live to declare the glory of the Lord. This are the thing what the scriptures tells us. Now, it's important that each and every one of us understand the power of words when it comes to faith. Our faith needs an expression. That's why in the books of Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, he said you believe in your heart, then you confess with your mouth. It's not enough to just believe in your heart. Without confessing, you have negated the process of salvation. So I want us to understand this as a foundation. The words of God abide forever. The words of God are true. The words of God are supernatural. The words of God are faithful. They can, be, they can be trusted. The Bible said they have been tried and tested in fire and they have never been found wanting. So we must understand that we must speak the right thing. I've set time with that number. You can determine the kind of harvest you should be expecting by the words that you're saying from your own mouth. How do I, how do I know this? Now, if you take good words to be wheat and bad words to be tears or thesis or thorns, According to the books of Matthew chapter 13, he said the words are seed. Once you say it, it goes forth as a seed into your future or into your destiny and it is planted. Now, if you keep saying more bad words than good words, then when they begin to grow and manifest, the tones or the bad words that you're spoken will kill the good words that you also have in your life. I was speaking to somebody some years ago who was angry about something I said. And what basically was angry about it was because I said to myself, or oh, I'm going to be great. I will make it in life. I will fulfill destiny. I will leave a full print on the sand of time. So he got upset. And he said to me, he said, you're full of yourself. And I asked him a very simple question. I said, have I said anything to you that's insulting? He said, no. Have I cursed you? He said, no. Have I insulted anybody in your family? He said, no. Have I said anything that might look like is belittling you or bringing you down? He said, no. I said, then why are you angry that I said something about my own life with my own mouth that's on my own body, which I feed with my own hands? Why do you have a problem with that? He said, well, you're, you're talking about as yourself as if you're going to be something great. I said, I am. Because I am sowing the seed into my destiny. The words I speak are seed. They contain life and spirit. That's what the word of the Lord says. And as he is, so we are in this world. Now, you have a mouth on your body that you can use to also prophesy unto yourself. Instead of you getting angry at what I'm saying, why don't you say something about your own life that you believe will come to pass? For out of the abundance of the heart, the Bible says, their mouth speak it. So what are you saying with your mouth? Now, let me say this to you. Before you go around declaring and saying things, you must understand that your heart must align with your mouth. The true must align together. Many times, if you're saying things out of your, heart, out of your mouth, that like you don't truly believe in your heart, you're simply lying to yourself. But you must also begin to fill your heart with the word of God so that there's, there's a reservoir of the word of God in your heart. If you can't say anything, say, I am blessed. I am blessed and highly favored. And soon you shall begin to see the blessing of God flowing in from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west, into your bosom. Now, why do we need to watch what we are saying? I've told us before, Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You see, your heart has the ability to create amazing things and is also the place of faith. And faith must speak. Faith was, must speak. Believing your heart 
and then speaking with your mouth brings God's promises to pass. Believing in your heart and then speaking into your mouth. You can't tell me you believe and you're not speaking. Because you see, what you say will command invisible forces into action. I've seen a man who has been saying for many years, I have cancer, I have cancer. And suddenly cancer came into his life and he died of cancer. I've even heard Kenneth E. Higgins, the um, senior Kenneth E. Higgins, um, share the testimony that his own mother, even though he was a faith preacher, a man of God who God did amazing miracles through his hands, his mother died of cancer. Why? Because she kept confessing it. So what are you confessing with your mouth? That's why it's important that you sit around people that influence you rightly. Have you noticed that sometimes you begin to sing lyrics of songs that you listen to the most? Or say the words of people that you listen to the most. That's why it's so important that your heart is a reservoir of things that are good, not evil. So that your destiny will not be truncated or cut short abruptly. Number two, you cannot win the battle of life against the giant that stands before you with your mouth closed. You've heard many times a closed mouth is a closed destiny. You've heard, do not approach your giant with your mouth closed. I love the story of David and Goliath. Many of us have read it so many times. We've read it, we've studied it, we've, um, you know, we actually use it as a symbol of victory of the weak over the mighty and powerful, or so to say. But if you study the story carefully from 1 Samuel chapter 17, you read from verse 43 to 46, you will discover that before any form of blow or weapon or arrows was exchanged or anything flew out of those the slings of David David already spoke in advance what are you saying what in the world are you saying it became a spiritual battle because uh, Goliath was so mad that said am I a dog that you have come against me with a staff and he said the Bible says the Philistine cursed David by his gods so it became a spiritual battle that's why David began to say, you are defying the armies of the living God, the God of, or God of Israel. And then he told him that he will cut off his head. He will feed it to the birds of the air. He has spoken ahead of time. What are you saying in the world? Are you speaking about your problems more than you're speaking about God's power and ability to deliver you? Are you speaking about the challenges you face more than the blessings of God that is coming to your life? What in the world are you saying? God confirms the words of the servant. Number three. He said, have you said in my ears, so will I do. Numbers 14, 28. He said, this is what the king of uh, the maker, the only one of Israel says. He said, concerning the works of my hands, command me ye. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 45, verse 11. Are you saying the right thing for the powers of God to go into manifestation? Until you say something, nothing would happen. Until you say something, nothing will happen. What in the world are you saying? For God command, confirmed the words of his servant and established the counsel of his messenger. What in the world are you saying? Let your words align with God's word to bring to pass God's plans for your life. Many of us are working against God through the words that we are saying. And we are wondering why our prayers are not being answered. Or why God is slow or in fulfilling his promises and his um, prophecies towards us. What in the world are you saying? What we say is an act of our will which allows God to go in action into action on our behalf. If we do not speak, God cannot act. So therefore, begin to say something so that the creative force of God begins to go into manifestation to bring to pass those things he has said. Remember, the word of God says this. He says that not a single jot of the word that he has spoken will go back to him unfulfilled. Isaiah 55 verse 11. So don't walk against God and don't walk against your own self in stopping God from fulfilling what he has said concerning your life. I believe God has a great plan for you. He has a great plan for your destiny. But you must cooperate with him with the things that he has said and you begin to say them so that you begin to see them manifest. That's why it's so important that every Christian read the scriptures. 
he gives us the blueprint of God's plan for our life. Except he has given you direct revelation through prophecies and dreams of visions. What in the world are you saying with your mouth? This is so crucial to fulfilling your world, fulfilling your destiny. You cannot subdue your world if your mouth is constantly closed. What carry creative power? Everything we are right now is a result of the words that we have heard. Believe me, your faith is built up to this level because of the word you have heard. That's what the Bible says, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Your teachers have taught you in school through words. That's how you have learned to read and write and add numbers together. So everything you have, your, the total summation of your destiny or your life unto this very moment is a result of the words that you have heard. So you need to begin to speak the creative word of God into life to bring to pass the destiny that you desire. What in the world are you saying? I want to begin to round up the sermon and I want to look at how we can begin to speak the right words. We've read earlier that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. So the first thing I believe in how do we begin to speak the right word that fulfills our destiny or brings our destiny to pass is that we begin to have a heart surgery where we empty our hearts of evil words and begin to fill it with good words, good words from the word of God. And we begin to say those things because Sammy said, he said, your commandment have I hidden in my heart so that I might not sin against you. If your faith is going to please God, then you must have his word in your heart. Your words must align with God's will and purpose for your life so that you can begin to speak those things that he wants you to say and begin to see those results that you desire. Speak the word of God, not your fears. I shall not die, but live to declare the glory of the Lord. You see, the Bible says in the books of 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13, it said, I believe therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Faith is a speaking force. What are you saying? Let the spirit of faith begin to express himself or find expression through your tongue. God said, let there be light. There was darkness all around. The earth was in chaos and there was nothing. There was darkness. But he said, let there be light. Begin to speak life. Begin to speak light into your situation. For light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. John chapter 1 verse 5. Speak your faith and not your fears or your doubt. I learned a very important lesson from the life of Jesus Christ in the books of John chapter 11. If you read from verse 11 to 14. Now Jesus was speaking here. He said, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I might wake him up from his sleep. Then his disciples said to him, Lord, if he is sleeping, he is doing well. How be Jesus spake to them of his death? But they thought he had spoken to them of the rest in sleep. Then he spoke to them plainly. He said, Lazarus is dead. Why? Jesus Christ was not speaking the situation he's seen around him. If you don't, if you don't have any cash on you, keep prophesying, my pocket is full of abundance. And surely as the Lord leave it, your pocket shall be full of ad- abundance. Remember the story in the books of 2 Kings chapter 7. The prophets prophesied. He said, by this time tomorrow, there shall be abundance in Samaria. And the man laughed and said, even God was supposed to open the doors and windows of heaven. Nothing can happen. But God broke every economical principle. And it made supply abundance. Now I want to say to us, each and every one of us must understand this. If we want the very best of God for our lives, we must begin to speak as God has spoken. We must begin to say what God sees. That's why we must have the eyes of faith and the ears of faith, not doubt in our heart. Because if you allow doubt to reign, surely the devil will take a full hold on that. Remember, through the words of your mouth, will you be delivered? And through the words of your mouth, would you be um, would you be condemned? Matthew 12, verse 37. Your word is producing the life you're living. Your life is very connected to your words. Believe me on that. 
everything you're attracting to your life is as a result of your words. Everything you're repelling from your life also is a result of your words. So begin to say the right thing that you want to attract into your life. God has connected your mouth to every area of your life. If you're going to get married to a lady, you have to say something to her. If you want to get a job, you have to say something at the interview. If you want to go, um, do a business transaction, you must say something to your business partners. Everything that you do in life is connected to your words. So you must begin to say the right thing. I shall be the head and not the tail. I shall prosper. I shall be above only and never beneath. Begin to say what the word of God has said. Begin to declare it with confidence and let the word of God be filled into your heart. And then you begin to see those things begin to manifest. I've said it again. Many people have, are living under self-proclaimed causes. It's not the enemy that is tampering with their destiny. It's not household wickedness that is fighting against them. But they are their own worst enemy. I'm smart. I'm not dumb. And the cells in your brain will become active. They begin to walk like that of a genius. I am smart. I am so intelligent. I understand this subject. For students that are in school that often find uh, maths difficult, begin to say to yourself, I understand maths. If it's science that you find difficult, begin to say, I understand science. I know it. I understand it. It is not difficult. Those who have written it don't have two heads. So you don't need two heads or two minds for you to be able to understand it. Begin to speak your faith and not your fear. Now, this year is going to be the greatest year of your life in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And I want your mouth to begin to say that. It shall be the best year of your life. There will never be a better yesterday. We go forward ever. Backward never. Let your mouth be filled with God's word and you'll be amazed by what will happen by the end of the year. Let me begin to close. Matthew chapter 12 verse 37. The Bible tells us clearly there. It says, on the day of judgment, everybody will give account of every careless word they have spoken. Each and every one of us. The words that you have said as in that God's work or God's uh, will and purpose for your life, you will give account of it. The word you have said to your neighbor to curse him and limit his destiny, you will give account of it. Things you have said out of anger, ignorance, and so on and so forth. If you have not repented, believe me, as God liveth, on judgment day, you will give account of it. So it's important that we become very, very careful with what we say. And I want to emphasize that. Our faith must be in God and in God's word and his power that is given unto us. God's word is incorruptible. Believe me, if you continue to say God's word into your life, his blessing every day into your life, it is just a matter of time. Just as you don't reap the uh, harvest the next day after you have planted a seed, it will surely manifest its fruit in your life. I'm benefiting the blessings of my fathers and my mothers and the blessings I've also proclaimed on my own life. So when you hear me say I'm going to be great, I'm going to be mighty. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Don't get angry. I'm only sowing the seed into my life. Because as God live it, I will reap my harvest. I want you to understand something. You have a mouth on your own body also. You can also say things. As you're saying it, you will see it. You're watering the seed. You're, the seed and the ground surely will germinate and bring forth good fruit. By the words you speak, you create the life you want. You will either live as God has intended for you to live or you will live against what he has intended for you. Today, I want you to draw a line in your life and say, henceforth, as I cross this line, I will never say anything negative about myself again. And I'll begin to say something positive. Believe in your heart. Say with your mouth. Believe in your heart and say with your mouth. What in the world have you been saying? Are you saying something good? of something bad. Don't forget, we all have choices. God bless you. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you very, very much for your word as comfort with power and life. And I'm praying, Lord God of heaven, that the effect of every negative word we have spoken 
over our own self will be broken today in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, Father, in the name that is above every name, that Lord God of heaven, henceforth, every good word that we have spoken will begin to manifest good fruit to the glory and praise of your holy name. The words that we have heard today will fall upon the fatter ground in our hearts, bring forth good fruit to the glory and praise of your holy name. We thank you very, very much, Almighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God.